Hey there, Linux enthusiasts. Welcome back to my channel, Tun Does Linux. Today, we're going to turbocharge your Linux system with my top 10 performance hacks. Whether you're running a server, a workstation, or just a home PC, these tips will help you squeeze every bit of power out of your machine. So let's dive right in. The first step to optimizing your Linux system is identifying which processes are consuming the most resources. You can use the top command to get a real-time view of system processes. Press P to sort by CPU usage and M for memory usage. Note down the PIDs of resource hogging processes. For a more user-friendly experience, install HTOP. It's available on most distributions. Use F6 to sort processes and F9 to kill them directly. Alternatively, use the PS command to list processes sorted by memory or CPU usage. Now that we've identified resource-hungry processes, let's learn how to kill unnecessary ones. The top command is a great tool for this. Once you've identified a process you want to terminate, you can kill it directly from top. Press K to enter the PID of the process you want to kill. Alternatively, you can use the kill command. This command sends signals to processes to terminate them. The basic syntax is kill signal PID. SIGTERM 15 is the default signal, allowing the process to clean up before exiting. SIGKILL 9 forces immediate termination if the process doesn't respond to SIGTERM. For example, to kill a process with PID 1234, use KILL 91234. If you know the name of the process, you can use KILLALL or PKILL. KILLALL requires an exact match, while PKILL can match partial names. KILLALL 9 Firefox pkill 9 firefox for those who prefer a graphical interface tools like system monitor can also be used to manage and kill processes always be cautious when killing processes as some might be crucial for system stability ensure you understand what each process does before terminating it now that we've optimized running processes let's tackle startup applications many applications start automatically at boot consuming resources. Optimizing these can significantly improve your system startup time and overall performance. To see which services are enabled to start at boot, use the systemctl command. This command lists all enabled services on your system. Once you've identified unnecessary services, you can disable them using systemctl. For example, to disable a service named example.service. Besides system services, User-level applications can also start automatically. These are typically managed through the .config-autostart directory. You can manually edit or remove .desktop files in this directory to control which applications start when you log in. Use systemctl status for service details. After making changes, reboot your system to ensure that the changes take effect and verify that your system is running smoothly. By optimizing startup applications, you can significantly improve your system's performance and responsiveness. Remember, every little tweak counts when it comes to maximizing your Linux system's efficiency. Now, let's talk about reducing swappiness. Swappiness is a Linux kernel parameter that controls how aggressively the system swaps out pages from RAM to disk swap space. By adjusting this value, you can optimize your system's performance based on its intended use. Swappiness values range from 0 to 100. A value of 0 instructs the kernel to avoid swapping as much as possible, while 100 means it will aggressively swap out pages to the disk. The default value is usually 60, which balances RAM and swap usage. Reducing swappiness can improve system performance by keeping more data in RAM, which is faster than accessing disk swap space. This is particularly beneficial for systems with ample RAM, as it reduces disk, I.O., and CPU usage. To adjust swappiness, you can use the sisctl command for temporary changes, or edit, etc., sys, ctl conf, for permanent adjustments. Best practices. For desktops, a lower value like 10 is recommended to keep more data in RAM, improving responsiveness. For servers, depending on memory constraints, a higher value might be necessary to prevent memory exhaustion. For systems with ample RAM, setting swappiness to 0 or 1 can be beneficial, as it minimizes swapping and reduces wear on SSDs. 
Always ensure you have enough RAM before reducing swappiness, as insufficient RAM can lead to performance issues if the system cannot swap out inactive pages efficiently. By fine-tuning swappiness, you can optimize your Linux system for better performance and efficiency. Remember, the key is finding the right balance based on your system's specific requirements. Now let's explore how using lightweight alternatives can significantly boost your Linux system's performance. This is especially important for older hardware or systems with limited resources. Traditional desktop environments like GNOME and KDE are feature-rich but can be resource-intensive. Consider switching to lightweight alternatives like XFCE, LXDE, or MATE. These environments provide a similar user experience with much lower resource usage. XFCE known for its simplicity and customization options. LXDE, extremely lightweight, ideal for very old hardware. Mate, a fork of Dome 2, offering a classic look with modern efficiency. Besides the desktop environment, using lightweight applications can also help reduce resource usage. Here are some alternatives to popular software. AbbeyWord, a lightweight word processor compared to LibreOffice. Midori, a fast and lightweight web browser, VLC. While not the lightest, VLC is more efficient than some other media players. Use apt auto-remove. Regularly clean up unnecessary packages to free up disk space and reduce clutter. Choose lightweight file managers. Tools like PCMan-FM or Thunar are more efficient than Nautilus or Dolphin. By adopting these lightweight alternatives, you can breathe new life into older systems or simply enjoy a snappier experience on any Linux machine. Remember, every bit counts when optimizing your Linux system. By choosing the right tools for your needs, you can achieve a faster and more efficient computing experience. Now, let's dive into optimizing kernel parameters to further enhance your Linux system's performance. These tweaks can help you fine-tune how your system manages memory, CPU, and other resources. To further optimize performance, adjust kernel parameters in sysctl.conf. Use CRAM. CRAM compresses memory, reducing RAM usage. Install CRAM config and enable it in Grub. Limit application CPU usage. Use CPU limit to limit CPU usage of processes. For example, limit Firefox to 30% CPU. Finally, keep your system updated to ensure you have the latest performance improvements. That's it for today's video. By implementing these 10 hacks, you'll significantly improve your Linux system's performance. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more Linux content. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.